Okay, this comes from a question that I was recently asked at a talk, which was how can a photographer apply a 3D, which has become extremely popular, start logo to the bottom of his image? Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a logo. It could be a copyright. It could even be your signature as well. Okay, let's take a look. We're going to come across the toolbox. We've got the default colors. Black is the foreground. White is the background. Any of the colors, just press D on the keyboard. Now, I want to reverse these, so we're going to press the X key, so white is now in the foreground, black is the background. We're going to pick up the text or the type tool, going to bring it into the image. Let's just take a look. Uh, there's the font I'm using. Go away, thank you very much. And the <laughs> size there, it's determined to pop up, is 72 points, so let's just click in. And I'm going to type in Joe Blogs. No, that wasn't the name of the person that asked me the question. I can't think of his name. Sorry about that, mate. And he wanted photography in there as well. And there you go. Now, at the moment, this isn't committed. And when I say that, I mean it's still showing it as layer one. But clicking on the T there, you'll now notice the name has gone in there. Right, now to give it this 3D look. And this is the first problem. If we come to the Edit menu, we drop down to Free Transform, Command T, Control T on the PC is the shortcut for that. There's the transform tool. Bring in the cursor inside and right click in. You'll notice perspective, which is what we need, is grayed out. Just going to press enter or return. So the way around this is to come up to the layers panel, over the text layer, right click, and we're going to choose rasterize type layer. What this will do is it'll convert it from a type layer into a normal layer. So there it is, it's now a normal layer. Now if we use that shortcut, which is Command T or Control T on a PC, there's the transform tool. Bring in the cursor inside, right click in, there's perspective, which will now allow us to drop the top down. We can pull the bottom out as well. We're making this deliberately larger because we will be able to use this uh, on other pictures. We're just gonna set this one up as a template. That looks pretty good there, pressing enter or return. Okay, now we're going to duplicate this layer using Command J or Control J on a PC. Clicking on the first layer there of our text, we're going to switch the top layer off and we're going to rename this so we don't get confused. Just clicking on the type itself, we're going to call this Shadow because this is going to be our 3D shadow. Now, the other thing is, I uh, don't particularly want it in white, we're going to use black. So, what we're going to do now is just come to the layers panel again. Clicking in the thumbnail and pressing down Command on a Mac, Control on the PC, you'll notice the way that the cursor changes, got that square on the back. We've now selected the actual type itself. Okay, coming across, we've got black as the background color. Now to fill the selection here with the color of the background, we simply use Command Delete, that's Command Delete on the Mac, it's Control Backspace on a PC. Now that has filled it with black. Command D or Control D will get rid of it. The selection, that is, not the color. Right, switching this back on, zooming in so we can see exactly what's going to happen. Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up the Move tool. The reason for picking up the Move tool is we're going to be using a shortcut. And I must be honest, I've tried this with various different sort of, uh, uh, what's the word, keyboard shortcuts. You can try Option, Command, and the down arrow, that's the option command and the down arrow, or you can try the alt control and the down arrow, but for some reason on some keyboards it doesn't work, so I find it easier to pick up the move tool. Now just simply pressing the option or the alt key, so hold the option and the alt key down and press the down arrow on the keyboard, and if you'll notice that it's beginning to get this 3D start, you'll notice the layers are being copied here and out to layer 3, so we're going to repeat this process until we get to Round about, uh, I think we're going to go 15 there, looks pretty good. So, zooming out. Right, yep, like the look of that. 15, it's highlighted. We're going to keep this highlighted. We're going to scroll down on Layers Panel. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to press the Shift key. So it's pressing the Shift key and clicking on the shadow. All of these now become highlighted. And this will enable us to come to the flyout menu here on the side and come to merge layers, which is Command D or Control E on a PC. And that's merged all the shadows into one layer there. So it's shown us shadow copy 15. So we know we had 15 layers in there. Right, so there it is. That's the story so far. But let's just take this a stage further. We're going to come up to the Joe Blogs Photography layer here. We're going to press 
Command or Control. So these are now both highlighted. The next thing we're going to do is use Command G, that's Command and the letter G, or Control and the letter G, which has put this into a grouping folder. And we're going to click on this and we're going to call this, uh, what are we going to call it? We're going to call it 3D Logo because I suppose that's what it is. So there it is, we've renamed this. What we can do is we can switch it off. Let's come in, let's pick up the crop tool. I'm just going to run the crop tool over the type itself, over our text we've got there. I'm just going to press enter, don't worry, the image is still safe. In fact, I'm just going to delete that for the time being. And we're going to come to file, we're going to go to save as, and we're going to save it not there, we're going to save it in my working folder, and we're going to call it uh, 3D logo and we're going to make sure we save it as a format, as a Photoshop format, in other words a PSD format as it's shown there, we're going to click save to that, so that's now saved it, we can close it down. Coming to another picture, you want to add the logo to this, right, we can go to file, open, recent, there it is there, don't forget you just may need to steer yourself to it, if you're using bridge or whatever, just steer yourself to where you're storing your logo, there it is, we're going to pick up the move tool. Using CS4, we've got the tab system at the top. Now to transfer it over, just click on it using the move tool, lift it up, coming up onto the tab. When the tab is now highlighted, we switch to the other image and we can drop it into place. Looks a little bit big, and this is where I say create a big one, you can always reduce it down in size. So it's Command T or Control T on the PC. Come into the top corner, and I'm going to hold the shift key down as well, so the shift key will keep the correct proportions, we can drop it down into position, perhaps something like uh, that would be pretty good, perhaps make it a little bit bigger, just holding the shift key again, that looks good like that, pressing enter or return. Now because we've saved it here in this grouping folder, it's given us a huge range of possibilities, let's zoom in, let's take a look at some of them, I'm going to move it into position there because we can now work individually on the layers themselves and for example we can click on the thumbnail that brings up the layer styles we could go to color overlay you can have it in red you can have whatever color you want but clicking on the little thumbnail there brings up the sort of the the color picker move it out I've actually got the eyedropper tool so you might want to have it in sort of a yellowy color you might want it black you might no perhaps not red whatever color you want you can sort of pick up from there going to click cancel to that just switch this off because something else we can look at is the gradient overlay with the gradient overlay don't forget this is the uh, the colors there which is the black and the white but we want to choose something like that could be pretty good so let's click OK and uh, style linear radial moving swiftly on angle nope let's have a look at this reflective yeah I like the look of that don't forget you can move the cursor out becomes the move tool you can move it round in there as well so you can line it up you can also come to scale and just drop it down so you get a little bit of a look like that could be pretty good works well with this style image and click OK don't forget you can also apply this to the background to the shadow layer as well so you can play with the shadow layer as well if you want to so there you go you can fold this up out of the way Let's zoom out and take a look. There it is, a nice dynamic style logo. Oh, it can also be a copyright symbol. Add it to your pictures, add it to your images. It's saved in a folder here so you can come in, you can change it, you can edit it, you can play with it to your heart's content. Go on, give it a try. Until the next time, happy imaging and take care.